Lachlan Milne, the cinematographer for Minari. Uh, this is a gorgeous film and it's based on Lee Isaac Chung's childhood. Uh, what were your early discussions mm -hmm. like with him when you joined the film? Um, well, thanks for having me, Joyce. Um, it, it, the first time uh, Isaac and I spoke, um, it was literally just to I, the first conversation I always have with the director is like, what what kind of what kind of moral compass do you have? What kind of person do you have? So we don't are you? So we didn't really talk too much specifically about the film. We just kind of, you know, spoke about art. We liked the music and all that sort of stuff. But essentially, when when we did that, my my first question to him was, what kind of film do you want to make? You know, what sort of, what's the tone of the film? You know, because I know it's such a deeply personal story for him, um, and it's 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 you know it's semi autobiographical. Um, uh, in a lot of detail. So the tone of the film was really important for me to understand how we wanted to approach that. Like, was it, was it, did you want it to feel like, you know, a, a series of snapshot memories from your childhood or was there a little bit more creative license with certain scenes? So it's kind of a little bit of a combination of the both. Um, but, um, uh, but the pacing of the film, you know, like we wanted it to feel like a, like a single camera film. We wanted it to feel um, accessible and not a showy, film photographically if that makes sense like we wanted it to be wide and simple and to keep it as an ensemble performance and try and incorporate the family into the film as much as we possibly could right yeah i was wondering if, if there were any specific shots or sequences that were kind of like i guess memory snaps from his upbringing so the, the, the biggest one i remember which was a deeply personal moment for him was the moment he realizes um that him being the young Isaac, um, when David realizes his um, grandmother has had a stroke during the night. And when he wakes up to that, um, because that happened to him, that was a genuine moment in his life that he remembers. Um, so that was a di very difficult day emotionally for him and for all of us, because we realized that there was, you know, he has such a deep love and respect for his family, but also the role that his grandmother played in shaping who he is as a person. Um, and that moment where that relationship was was inevitably changed forever was um, that was a very it was it was a, it was one of those wonderful moments um, on so many different personal levels to be a part of. Um, and I think it was a real um, kind of catharsis for him on a personal level. That was the mm -hmm. biggest thing, I think. Yeah, because the way it was shot was also it was because it was one of like the few close ups you had because it comes Correct. up yeah. and, like he wakes up. So, yeah, what was yeah. it like doing that whole sequence? That was tough for Isaac, poor old Isaac. Um, he's such a lovely man, um, and he he's a hard on his sleeve kind of guy, which is one of the reasons why I like him so much. And that was um, that was a it was it was difficult for him to get through. But we uh, you know we we put it in a in a point in the schedule where we'd had a few weeks worth of work. I mean, the majority of our filming took place inside that trailer, so uh, so we spent. Um, quite a bit of time getting to know each other as a crew. So by the time we would get to a scene like that, which was obviously very emotional for him and for the cast, we obviously wanted to be dialed in and um, and uh, everybody's comfortable with each other. So, but um, but yeah, it's interesting that you noted the, the point about the fact that there's very few close-ups. That was one of the big things that we discussed going into the film was, was you know, we wanted to have this concept of earning a close-up in the sense that don't, don't just put the camera close to somebody at all points, just in the interest of coverage. It's like, it should have some emotional, motivation for doing that and again like the biggest thing for me was this this cast was so fantastic and they were so watchable and um the interaction they had was so genuine for me it felt anyway i wanted to try and bring that into a, the frame as as much as possible at, at as many times as possible hence while we're trying to shoot wider master shots or developing shots where people would come in and out of frame but but that was one obviously that was a that was a real uh, a significantly important tonal part of the story for us to go in close and so that's oh yeah you're right it's um was one of the rare times we chose to do that because it was mm -hmm. a really significant moment yeah i like like how you say you want those shots to be earned because and and if you like if you've seen the movie and you like look back on you really can like you know pinpoint those scenes like the the rooftop argument between mm -hmm. uh, monica as well like there's more close-ups and medium shots of them yeah talking to other yeah yeah that's great yeah no i'm glad you appreciate it that was a real that was something that was very important for us mm -hmm. Um, I, well, I like the contrast between the the farm scenes in mm -hmm. these like wide open spaces and like sunlit mm -hmm. versus the tight spaces of their home, and it, mm -hmm. I, I feel like it spoke to the immigrant experience of you know having to reconcile like these two worlds. So was that what you were going for with those compositions? Yes, I really like w when we did the exterior work. It was a chance for us to open up the scale of the film a lot. 
But the thing that the Isaac and I spoke about that I was really interested in was I like e even though uh, I kind of like the contrast of you know the single man who's put all of his hopes and dreams into this taking his family into this environment, but he's essentially on his own. Even though he does have some help from from other one other person, it's essentially his vision, his dream, his desire um, to support his family in this particular way that he seems fit. But I wanted to um, to also show the scale of that, like what a sort of semi impossible task that would be. For one person to try and um, uh, you know develop this farm on what feels like an endless block of land that has very little infrastructure in the in the first place, to the point that there's a scene in there that where we had to work about how had to shoot it shoot to um, to just to find out how he would get plumbing irrigation to certain parts of these things as well. Um, we we spoke about I, again. It's like I didn't want to influence it photographically in the sense that I. Uh, I didn't want to, you know, diffuse any any harsh sun. We shot it in July in 2019 in Tulsa, Oklahoma, in you know peak summer, so it was just belting sun, um, and we weren't able to to necessarily schedule our days, which you know you had 14, 15 hours worth of light, so we didn't we we couldn't necessarily just shoot in the mornings and just shoot in the evenings, especially with younger talent as well. So that was something that I really leaned into was was the kind of like the brutality and the harshness of of what an experience that would have been, particularly at that time of year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was wondering, like, between waiting for the right light and working mm -hmm. with a kid, yeah. <laughs> and like, and I'm like, what was the time management like? <laughs> it was. Um, I mean, that's it. That was the the um, a lot of the ways the schedule was dictated by that because Alan, who's wonderful, he does such a wonderful job, um, and he's such a good kid. Is almost in every scene in the movie as well. So you've got to think about that because obviously, you know, we could do we could schedule a twelve hour day, but but Alan's. Um, uh, hours. I think he was only allowed six hours with maybe an hour break or something like that. I can't can't completely remember the specifics, but so then you've got to find other stuff to shoot, and you, and you can't necessarily, which is obviously with the adults or with Noel, his sister, who was a little bit older, and we got a little bit more time with her. But um, and it's also I've done quite a bit of work with with children now, and um, and they're always um, much more inclined to um, to work in the mornings and the afternoons, and so. We'd, we would normally traditionally shoot Alan in the morning um, when he's sort of bright eyed and bushy tailed and excited to be there and stuff. And then we'd finish with the adults in the afternoon or we'd block scenes where if Alan was involved, perhaps he'd be at the other end of the trailer so that we could shoot, you know, Stephen and um, uh, whoever else, maybe YJ, if they were having a conversation at the other end and he could be part of that conversation, but be off camera. So there was a few kind of logistical things involved in, in how we'd schedule that as well, for sure. Uh, one of my favorite shots is this uh, scene of Jacob like lighting his cigarette. Um, oh the yeah, there's yeah. the gray pink sky in mm -hmm. the background. Uh, was that shot plan or was that one of those like happened in the moment? It was 100 percent spontaneous. So we were. It was one where we, it was one of those days where it was, I love that moment too as well. Partly because it was like the point that Harry used it in the film was perfect. The score that Emil did for it is wonderful. And it was completely spontaneous. I, like we were, we were. It was a, it was a soft split day. So we were doing sort of like half day, half night. And it was we were waiting for the sunset to go into hard night so I could light and do some exterior work. Um, but um, it was a beautiful time of day where I just took the camera off, and we didn't have very many opportunities at that time of day to shoot um, transitional things. You know, sunset, sunrises, that sort of stuff. And so I just took the camera off. I had a seventeen mil lens on. I just walked off and did with the camera assistant and did a bunch of. Um, uh, sunset shots and then Stephen just walked up and he was still in his wardrobe from the previous scene he just walked up and he was just having a cigarette casually behind me and I noticed that so I just kept rolling I just pulled the camera off the tripod just crowded it and wandered up to him and just started filming did you know you were filming him yeah because it was it was like there was only three of us there at the time and then eventually Isaac saw something was going on and he wandered over and then it just became a scene you know there's no dialogue but it's I, I love the simplicity of that but it's you know, because it's the point of the film that, that that we ended up using it in is he's at a real crossroads as to whether or not it's going to work out for him. Has he made the right choice, et cetera? And that even without any dialogue, I think visually that moment of him kind of sweat stained, smoking in a semi kind of defeated way, just sitting in a huge, big, vast field at the end of the day tells a lot for me from a story side of things. So, yeah, I, I love that scene, too. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, the Minari location um, where uh, they grow it. Uh, did you mm -hmm. work with the location manager to find like that spot? In... Well, that was a tricky one to find in Tulsa, Oklahoma, to find something there uh, yeah. that had uh, 
running water that wasn't too far away from the city because it was only a very modest budget film as well. So all of those kind of proximity things had to kind of come into um, into equation as well. So we tried to find that on the, on the on the farm that we shot in, which was about twenty minutes or so out of um, out of Tulsa, uh, and there just wasn't anything like that. So we actually had to we we did all of our work at that location in one day. Oh, wow. we could only, we could, yeah, we could. Only, it was only a twenty-five day shoot schedule as well, and so we dedicated all of our work um, to that place for the one day. And the weather was a bit uh, up and down; it rained a little bit at times, which you can sort of tell if you pay attention um, enough. Um, but uh, but yeah, we are, uh, and also just trying to find the Minari vegetable in Tulsa to be able to, <laughs> you know, just physically <laughs> get it because we had, obviously had to dress all that stuff in. So that was a challenge within itself. So. So, uh, so yeah, and then access there was difficult. We had to build some ladders and anyway, oh, I could go on and on. But yeah, that was a tough one. But at the end, it was right. It was perfect because I love that final shot of the film too. That long, big steady cam push in. Um, yeah, and, and the green is a good contrast with like the creek and like the trees too. Yeah, yeah. Brown and all this. yeah absolutely. Yeah. So no, we were really lucky with that. But that, yeah, you're right. That was a real search, that one. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Have you had Minari? I have, I have, yeah. I spent like we we had quite a few meals together. Um, you know, Stephen and and um, uh, Yong and uh, Isaac, and th there was such a big South Korean contingency um, as part of the crew and cast, and it was such a wonderful, welcoming environment. And um, I was spent most of the time in a hotel there by myself, and so on the weekends, you know, we'd go to Isaac's place or Stephen's place or something, and and there would be a fantastic YJ would be there would just be a fantastic big. Korean, um, you know, Sunday lunch put on, um, and it was wonderful. So I had actually had it before, but I hadn't had it in that environment with the film that we're working on, which that carries so much significance. And then hearing, you know, how how important it is to South Korean culture, or to Korean culture there anyway. It was um, it was wonderful. It was really great. Yeah, awesome. Mm. Uh, well, Lachlan, uh, thank you so much for your time. It was great speaking with you, and we'll see you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.